Should I be telling my family not to bury me in my favorite color? Ah, okay, let's keep going. Have the Toyol. The name for this Toyol. creature is sometimes translated in English to goblin. Sorry, I got way too excited. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me on my channel today. My name is Cassie LaCreme, and today, because so many of you requested it, I'll be reacting to top 10 scary Malaysian urban legends. So, as many of you already know, I spent the last three years living in Malaysia, the last eight years traveling to and from Malaysia, and then before that I lived in Singapore for three years. So I'm definitely very experienced in this region, and in my time in both those countries I did hear a lot of ghost stories and a lot of urban legends. So I'm intrigued to see how many of them I've seen, and if they're the same way that I have heard them. Now, I might even have a few ghost stories of my own. So if you guys want to hear them, put it in the description down below. All right, let's not waste any more time and let's get into the video. Okay, headphones are on. I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Let's count it down. One, two, three. Go. Hello, welcome back everyone. I'm sure I don't need to explain this series to you guys anymore, but okay, I'll do it for the newcomers. This, this is where I take a look before. at some of the creepy tales, both old and new from countries all around the world. We've done quite a few now. Many cool of them have been concept. great suggestions from you. This is actually one of them, and I think this might be one of the best. Let's see what you think though. My name is Danny Let's Burke, see. and this is the top 10 Bring it on, Danny Malaysian Burke. urban legends. Starting off number 10 now, we have the taxi passenger. The story goes that one <laughs> night a taxi driver was working late. I know this the one. ticked down to midnight night he suddenly saw a beautiful young woman standing at the corner of a traffic light junction she had long black hair and a flowing white dress he asked yep. her if she needed a ride she got in without a word the taxi driver asked where she wanted to go the girl mm -hmm. simply handed him a piece of paper it had a number and the name of a road on it the taxi driver wasn't sure where it was i heard this in singapore not in malaysia she kept nodding every time he went the correct way, but never actually said a word. They finally okay. reached the road. It was very narrow, just enough for one car to pass down, and it was dark. There were no working streetlights. A mist engulfed mm. the car. He tried to peer through the fog and see the numbers on the houses, but to his horror, there were none. Just rows and rows of gravestones. What? He was gripped with fear and nervously asked if this was the right okay. place. No this answer came from the back seat. Definitely he continued different to drive to how slowly, I've heard but it. then felt a tap on his shoulder. Too scared to turn around, he stopped the car. He heard the rustle of money and felt her hand Ooh. giving him some cash. He threw it down without even counting it. He heard the back <gasps> door open and then close. No. He then sped home without looking back. The next morning, curiosity got the better of him and he returned to the same street. It was okay. indeed a large cemetery. He found the lot number that <gasps> no. the girl had given him. His eyes widened okay, in so horror different. as he saw the woman's picture staring back at him from a fresh gravestone. He later found out the girl had died the week before in a horrific accident at the very same junction he had picked her up from. It was a hit and run, and the driver was never caught. Moving on to number nine now, we... Okay, let's pause it there for a second. So, okay, I heard this one in Singapore, but I heard it told slightly differently. So, first of all, it was in Singapore. Second of all, it was a woman picked up on a dark highway but her drop off was different. So she was actually dropped outside of a house and then before he could actually ask her for payment, she got out, shut the door and ran into a house. So then when he didn't get payment, he went into the house and knocked on the door and the guy who came to the door showed him a photo of the woman and said, is this the woman you're talking about? And he said, yes, yeah, she ran off into this house without paying. And he said, yeah, she passed away recently in a traffic accident and she keeps trying to get home. Ooh, uh, makes my hair stand on end. All right, so I actually have my own ghost story surrounding this tale, something that happened to me when I retold it. So if you guys wanna know what happened, make a comment below and I will possibly share my creepy story with you guys and see what you think. Ooh, okay, let's keep going. We have the yellow Volkswagen on Karak Highway. For many Malaysians, the Karak Highway is the most haunted road in the country. This is in part due to it having the highest accident rate in the whole of Malaysia. Aside from the reports of an eerie feeling along the road, there are some more highway. solid stories. Perhaps the most famous is that of the yellow Volkswagen. The story goes that if you see this yellow car on the road, it will block your lane. It will then begin to slow down to a snail's pace, forcing you to overtake it. Once you really? do that, you'll continue on for a while until it happens again the same yellow car will be blocking you it will slow down you will go past it and then it happens again 
and this again. This is creeping me out. After a few times, out. you'll realize that it's actually just the same car. And what's even more creepy is that there appears to be nobody driving it. The only way what? to stop the cycle no is to actually driving. not How's that overtake possible, it. Guys? Some say that when you are overtaking it, the car will speed up and disappear into darkness. Next up at number eight now, we have the Lime Super. Okay, I haven't heard that one before, but that makes sense why a few times when I was in the car with people, they would make a joke about a Volkswagen, but I never knew the story. I'm kind of glad I didn't ask because driving on Malaysian highways at night is creepy. Okay, number eight, let's go. Yeah, This is said to be the ghost of a woman who nice died while Suya. giving birth to a stillborn child. The mother's grief turns her into a sort of flying banshee creature. On the surface, she will look like a beautiful woman with long nails, Wait. hair down to her ankles, and dressed all in green. However, that's don't two be different ghosts, right? Isn't the there the one that's the head? Coastal areas and and then there's pregnant Pontiana? women out of jealousy. People believe you can stop a pregnant woman's corpse from becoming a Lang Soya, though. You need to place Ooh. beads in her mouth, an egg in what? each armpit, and needles on her hands. This should make it possible for her to what? pass on peacefully to the afterlife. If everything fails, Guys. there is said to be one way to fight a Lang Soya. You cut off her long nails and stuff her hair into the hole in the back of her neck. Moving on to number seven, what? Now, the DJ. Hang on a minute. Okay, first of all, I'm confused. Is this Lang Soya, is this supposed to be I'm confused. Is it supposed to be Pontiana? Because he showed a photo of the one that's just the head with the guts, and that's a different one, but I can't remember the name. So I'm not sure which one we're referring to, but I know Pontiana was supposed to have died whilst giving birth to a child. I didn't know it was a stillborn child, possibly. But now I'm super confused. But I had never heard of the things in the mouth, the armpits, the who. Guys! Okay, I have to know if any of you actually believe in this and if you practice it, do you actually bury people with the nails in the hands and the Ooh. And tell me, is it is Lang Soya the same as a Pontiana? Or is that the head what help me? Thanks guys. Number seven. This urban legend revolves around a Malaysian radio DJ. He had a late night show in the 90s where listeners could call in to share their ghost stories. One night a man called in to share his story. He said he was driving down a highway late at night with his parents, his oh, wife, I love the Malaysian and their baby. Call -in they shows. were all asleep in the back and he felt quite sleepy too. He saw a large truck coming the other way but on his side of the road. It suddenly sped past him but before he even had time to collect his thoughts it happened again and then again and then again. It happened a few more times, each one as shocking as the last, and then it seemed to change. The truck started appearing behind him now. He realized it was chasing him. He sped up, trying not to panic. What? As he came over a hill, he suddenly saw this a like single headlight heading towards to him anyone, again. Right? He swerved violently to avoid it, but lost control of the car, crashing through the highway barrier and into a deep gully. Then he told the radio DJ that the crash had killed all of his family. He sounded distraught. Then he said the crash took his own life as well. He then hung up the phone. The DJ thought it was just a prank and no. laughed it off. However, the next day's newspaper had a story on the front page. It said an accident had occurred along the highway, the same one described by the caller. A car had crashed the night before, killing really? an elderly couple, a husband and wife, and their baby. The DJ was stunned. He felt the hair stand up on the back of his neck. He rushed to play the tape back that from the feeling. mystery I'm call the night it before, now. but all he found was minutes of nothing but silence. Next up, number six. Now we no. have the Merman. Oh, I just got goosebumps. Shocking pictures began circulating around Malaysian websites that seemed to show what Ooh. people were describing as a merman. That's a male version a merman? of a mermaid. It was supposedly caught by a fisherman What's in this? Teluk Buhang Beach in Penang. There were six photos of the creature in taken Penang. from various angles. They were attached to an email that was going around claiming that the newspapers were not being allowed to share these pictures. The merman appears vaguely sure humanoid not. in shape and seems to be about the size of an adult male. There were two long fins that resembled large ears on its Come head. On, it had two arms serious, and was covered in serious. fins from head to toe. A while after this, internet investigators claimed that the pictures had come from an eBay sale in Florida. But diehard conspiracy theorists believe this is all just part of oh. a cover up and that there are more mermaids okay, out there so in the Malaysian seas. At number five now, guys, we Whoa. have the oil mask. The pause, pause. I feel like I want to like go like research everything now and get in on these conspiracy theories. <laughs> What do you guys think? Ooh, do we have any Orang Penang in the house? Let me know in the comments if you've heard this one and if you believe it. Okay, we are halfway. Ooh, anyone else feeling creeped out yet? Eee! 
let's go number five. Oily Man is a sort of supernatural being called the oily into man, life I've heard and of controlled him. by an evil witch doctor. It can cover its whole body in a black oily substance mm. that makes him practically invisible at night, difficult to catch, and makes breaking and entering extremely easy well, for why. him. It crawls at the walls and the sides of tall buildings. Once on top of them, it leaps from rooftop to rooftop. Some say it's like the Malaysian version of Venom, although Ooh. the Oily Man definitely came before that. Before you say it, this yeah. is just an ancient creature passed down. Down through stories. Yeah, you Think guys again, thought of it. As recently yes. as 2012, there were reports of a knife wielding oily man leaping from building to building what? in Malaysia. The residents of Kampung claim to have no. seen and heard him for 10 Money. days. Moving on to number four now, we have Kampung. the hotel bed. The story goes like Kampung. this. Kampung means village. Friend. Kampung Manin. E now I'm scared to stay in the Kampung. <laughs> oh, where does he find out this stuff? He must have done his research. I'm impressed. Let's keep going. Number four. And planned a weekend oh, trip no, I think to I've a heard Malaysian this resort line. during their break. They booked one room with two beds, figuring they could save money by fitting four people in Which them. When they reached the resort, they wasted no time in seeing the local attractions for the day. They decided to freshen up back at the hotel before heading out to dinner. While one of them was lying on the bed, they complained that it felt quite lumpy, but they decided to not complain to hotel management because they already had too many people in the room and they didn't want to get caught. After dinner, they headed out to some bars before returning around midnight. When they got back, they got ready for bed. However, when they began to rearrange the mattresses to fit all of them in, they saw something truly horrific. There, sandwiched between the mattress and the bed springs, was the corpse of a woman. What? They ran out of the room and told hotel management. The hotel were keen to avoid any negative publicity I and decided heard this to pay one. the students a it's lot of I money thought. to keep quiet. Still, this rumor began to spread and now many young Malaysian people will make sure to check if their hotel mattress ever feels too lumpy. Get Coming at number three out. Now. Oh my lord. That brings back memories of some scary happenings I have experienced in hotels in Malaysia. Let me know if you want to hear those as well. Ooh, that is creepy. But is that like an urban legend? I guess that's an urban legend because they say it happened, but it's not confirmed. I mean, crazier things have happened. Crazier things have happened. And now I think I'm gonna start checking the mattress when I stay in hotels. <laughs> Clearly I scare easily. All right, three more, let's go. Janet's ghost. The story goes that Janet was Janet. a young Chinese nurse in Kuching's public hospital. Legend says she disappeared Sorry, around the late 1960s. This was at a time when there was an epidemic of kidnappings in the city. All Ooh. the police had figured out so far were that the kidnappings may be linked to the construction of Satok Bridge. If construction of the bridge was held up, it meant that the territorial spirits were displeased. Human sacrifices had to be made what? to appease them. Apparently, they preferred to sacrifice virgin girls, but only use their heads. This meant they would be huh? decapitated and their heads would be embedded in the concrete pillars to strengthen the bridge. No. Eventually, they found Janet's headless body, confirming the police's theory. Her grieving parents buried her in a red dress Wait, and red what? shoes. According to some Chinese belief systems, if a woman dies wearing red, she will return as a vengeful spirit. They say her parents did this so she could return from the dead and take revenge on her killers. No. Then, the sightings began. Villagers on the outskirts of the city reported to seeing a mysterious woman dressed all in red. She would catch rides on the There's the headless one again. Berries by herself. She would always leave behind Chinese hell notes. Her quest to find her killers continues, and she doesn't care who stands in her way. Moving on to material. Wait a minute. Okay. In my time in Asia, I have definitely heard a lot of stories like this where they say structures or um, construction sites, buildings, things they've created don't work because they've been built on a spiritual burial ground. They've dug up a graveyard to do it, something along those lines, or it's like sacred areas that they're trying to build something on and therefore those things don't actually work. However, the heads in the pillars is a new one for me. <laughs> oh my God, creepy. I don't know how I feel about that one. But he's also, is that true about the being buried in the red outfits? Like, should I be telling my family not to bury me in my favorite color? Ah, okay, let's keep going. 
we have the Toyol. The name for this Toyol. creature is sometimes translated in English to Goblin. But Sorry, it's not the I got way too excited. You're probably thinking of. This thing is much more creepy, in my opinion. It's said to be the spirit of a small child yep. invoked from a dead human fetus. It's traditionally described as looking part. like a near naked baby with brownish skin, large fangs, and sharp ears. Ooh. The Toyols always have a master, and the master may use it to capture other humans. It's said that the owner of the Toyol may become rich beyond their wildest dreams, but there is always a price to pay when it comes to the spirit world. Whoa. Becoming the master of a Toyol can bring fortune, but the health of every one of the master's family will steadily decline. They will eventually lose everything and then slowly die. The Toyol are evil in their behavior, but okay, childlike so in their thinking. People use this to try and distract a Toyol from entering their homes. They scatter buttons on the floor, leave sweets or toys next to them in the hopes that a Toyol will pass on and spare them another day. Oh. And finally, number one. Oh my gosh. Okay, this one's news to me. I did a bit of research on Toyol because I recently did a Toyol makeup for Halloween. I'll put the link in the description down below. I did a rap as Toyol in a Malay song. Um, you can check it out in the link down below. There's also photos here. Check out some photos. It was like super fun, but I had my own misfortune that the teeth that I put on to become the vampire actually adhered to my teeth and I had to go to the dentist and get my teeth polished because all of the stuff that I used to glue them on they got stuck and it chipped my tooth slightly. So not a whole lot of luck for me when it comes to toils, but hopefully you like the video. Let's do the last one. Number one, let's go. One now we have the horror. horror. Remember we What's were talking that? earlier about Karak Highway, the really Ooh, haunted the same road, highway. but we're returning for another scary okay. story there. One day a couple were traveling down the road to return to their hometown after a relative's wedding. They decided to travel late at night and the journey was going well for a while, but then signs of trouble started. Their trusty proton weirer began to zigzag wildly Specific? on the road. As they struggled to control it, the engine gave a last splutter and then died. The husband was shocked. He had just had the car serviced the day before. Now they were stranded this by the very road detailed in the middle of the story. night and only about halfway to their destination. All around them was desolate hills and jungle. They kept trying to start the car over and over again, but nothing seemed to work. They gave up and decided to flag someone down for help. When that didn't work, the husband decided to try and find an emergency phone Ooh. somewhere. The wife disagreed because she was afraid that he might get knocked down walking in the dark. He went anyway and told his wife to wait in the car. She waited never for what go felt alone. Like forever. The jungle trees seemed to shift. When will people learn? Around. Never go then alone. There was a loud thump Safety on in the numbers. Roof of the car, followed by a rustling sound. She thought it was animals and decided to not get out of her car to check. Then another car's headlights began to approach from behind. The car slowed down as it passed, but then quickly sped off. She waited for hours. Other cars did the same. She began to worry more about the rustling sound from the roof and where exactly her husband was. Finally, a police car approached. It stopped a few meters away. The policeman got out and huh? called to her using a megaphone, telling her to back away from the car slowly. When she got to the police car, she looked back out of curiosity. Yes. To her horror, she saw her husband's body on the roof of the car. There was a demonic creature feasting on his blood. Ugh. This had been happening for all those hours she was sitting in the car. No. The police quickly took her away, and the legend began. And on that gruesome and grisly note, we will leave it there. Oh. All right. Thank you, sir, for your fantastic video. On that final one, isn't that interesting? The number one top one that he's done is actually, I've heard an urban legend of that, but in Western culture, in, um, I grew up in Australia, so obviously I heard it in Australia, but it was told as an American story. I remember being told it when I was young, but it was a similar thing. Husband and wife in the car, he, it breaks down, he goes to get help, he doesn't come back for ages, and she keeps hearing a scratching on the roof, but it wasn't him being feasted on above the roof, it was actually, he was being, um, his dead body was hung from a tree and it was just enough to be scraping along the roof. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm sufficiently freaked out now. I don't know about you guys, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad it's daytime while I'm filming this. <laughs> Ooh. 
All right, guys, well, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Which ones do you believe in? Which ones do you have maybe experiences with? How do you guys feel about urban legends in general? Uh, don't forget to check out some of the other videos in my channel. Let me know any videos that you want me to react to in the comments down below. And I'm happy to announce that our latest merch is out now, the Tattooed Bombshell. Check that out, grab some, it is out for a limited time only. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell so you actually get to find out when I'm posting videos. I love you and I hope to catch you in the next one.